Now this has to be one of the tallest vehicles we've ever driven and tested. Yes, as you can tell, it's the new Switch double-decker electric bus. So just how big is this electric double-decker? Now this is slightly larger than things we normally test. 9.8 meters long and look at that, that's 4.7 meters high. Flush mounted glass, LED lights, the latest tech. And can you notice those bars up there? Well, they're to prevent the bus hitting branches and breaking the flush mounted glass. Yes, people, this is the made in Chennai Switch EIV22. An all-electric double-decker built by a company that's seen a huge amount of success with e-buses around the world. Not just that, this bus is tailor-made for Indian conditions. Switch used its made-in-India 9-meter EV single-deck bus and made it into a double-decker. And the bus was given larger anti-roll bars for better stability. Switch also used an air suspension in the rear and the 1.5 ton battery is placed under the main chassis rail for greater stability. So battery capacity is 231 kilowatts and it's based on different packs here, spread out and placed under the chassis. The chassis is a long member, you can see there the thick bar of steel. It's a CNC type and that's why the weight distribution of this double-decker is so much better. Now charging happens with DC chargers two DC chargers, 120 kilowatts each and that's where they sit. So charging it takes approximately an hour and a half and that's enough to get the whole bus charged. A total of 240 kilowatts from the twin DC chargers would make this amongst the fastest chargers in India. Sat under the rear deck lid is the motor control unit and the battery management system. Now power from the battery comes to this distribution box and then it's transferred to the MCU or the motor control unit which then sends the power forward to the electric motor. Further up near the rear axle is a massive coffee table sized permanent magnet motor made by Dana in Pune. It makes 320 horsepower but the staggering number is 3100 newton meters of torque. Yes, that's right. 3100 Nm. So what's that like to drive? Well, first up, let's get into the cab and look at that pretty complicated looking dash. So this is the basic layout of the dash of the bus. And on the left here, here's your gear selector, reverse neutral drive. Pretty simple, you have to put your foot on the brake and then select, so wait for a couple of seconds and you get DD, that's drive, back to neutral and reverse is the same. E is for steeper inclines. Now this display here is generally to show the driver what's happening in the bus, there's a camera for each floor and each side, as you can see up there and you can also go into the menu and change a couple of things. These are the controls for the air conditioning, the one on top and the one below. And this green button is to open this door here and that one is for the rear door. Finally, time to get going. As I release the hand-operated air brake and select drive, I notice I'm sweating despite the air conditioning. What if the bus lurches forward, porpoises, starts to bunny hop, but the double-decker eases forward smoothly. Now this absolutely is terrifying, driving something that's one floor high, 4.7 meters, and yes, taking a U-turn is even scarier. You have to look around for power lines, you look around for low-hanging trees, roofs and other features. But what makes it so easy to drive is that this power steering is very light and easy and direct and the throttle and brakes are nicely calibrated. The brakes, as expected, are a bit spongy and slow to react but that first part is regeneration. 
So when you tap the brakes initially, that's regen. And then you get on to the friction brakes. This bus has disc brakes in front. Now this is the last thing I would expect, but it is actually easy to take a tight turn like this. A nice wind from the motor when I press the accelerator. And it does have quite a bit of zip. Shuttle responses, thankfully, are not spiky. But you can feel the huge amount of urge and twist it has as soon as you hit the throttle. Now, once you get used to it, it's even easier to drive. Visibility is pretty good, even out from this small window. It even rides over these bumps well, and that's important for a bus in Bombay, especially a place where you get some of the worst roads you can find. And the really neat bit is that the rear suspension is done by air springs. So, like some of the luxury cars, the front suspension is by mechanical means and the rear is air suspension. There is some amount of movement and this is only to be expected. This, after all, isn't a monocoque chassis. Soon, I'm using more throttle, I'm turning with more speed and confidence. And what impresses is just how well balanced this tall boy feels. So the surprising thing is there's no feeling of it being top heavy. It's probably because all the weight's right down there. And the turning circle is pretty phenomenal. Now, this is the most challenging part for double-deckers, taking a corner. But as you can see, the stability is fantastic and it's that low center of gravity due to the batteries that helps it stay in balance. Crazy thing is, I've driven utility vehicles and SUVs that have rolled more. And this bus feels agile for its size. The flat steering needs a bit of twirling, but the bus isn't hesitant to turn. I can't imagine how much more difficult the old diesel buses would have been compared to this. Having driven trucks of that vintage, it truly would be a chore to drive that. And this one is an absolute pleasure. The bus gets disc brakes up front, anti-lock brakes and hill hold. And the remaining 198 BST buses on order will also get ESP, which would be great on wet roads, great for stability. For added safety, the bus also gets a remote battery monitoring system and a button that decouples the battery in an emergency. Now these controls are here for emergencies. This one disconnects the batteries from the bus if there's a possibility of a fire. And here is the fire extinguisher. It's in auto, but you can also trigger it manually. Wish they'd retain that hand-operated horn though. The body of the bus is made by Anthony in Mumbai, a thoroughly modern-looking double-decker. It gets a flush, one-piece of pillarless look up front that has the glass windscreens joined by an acrylic panel. And up front, in the nose, you get an array of powerful LED lights. And on the side, there's something we're all familiar with, the floating roof. And yes, what looks particularly attractive is the manner in which the green tinted glass lights up when the sun hits it. Also like the manner in which the waistline flicks up. There's no rear windscreen, however, behind the perforated metal paneling is the air conditioning system. Bus also gets CCTV cameras on the inside and a public address system. The best seats, of course, are on top. Now this is the place to be if you want to get the best view. Just look at these windows, they're massive. Wow, huge windows, great view outside. And of course it's air conditioned, vents here, here and here. Also no bench seats here, everyone gets their own bucket seat. Now decent seat comfort, the squab isn't too long, but the backrest is nicely inclined and you have plenty of headroom. But shoulder room, well, that's a bit tight. There is scope for improvement, however. The fit and finish in places isn't very good.
Now, double deckers have been a part of Mumbai's heritage and have been around for around 86 years. They are practical, carry nearly twice as many passengers, and are 36 percent more energy efficient. They take up less road space for the number of passengers they carry and Switch's EIV-22 will also not put out any local emissions. It's also nimble, will keep up with traffic and many will be happy to travel in its air-conditioned comfort. Would love to ride on the top deck along Mumbai's upcoming coastal road. Now, wouldn't that be fun? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for flying Autocar India and today we'll be doing a cruising speed of not more than 80 kilometers an hour. But this isn't an Airbus or a Boeing, it's 